I plan to do something I've never done before. Disrupt a study group. Awestruck. Thank you, Alder. No, I meant the cloud. Looks like Jim Carrey. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you guys, show some respect. Rebecca's pitching here. Thanks, Michael. Zip it. Real journalist with a real story here. <laughs> Michael Davies, name dropping. That's a good idea, Rebecca, but head office wants to see more articles on romance. We could publish my fan mail. A boy from Red Deer just asked me to his prom. It was my first long-distance dump. Actually, they want Rebecca to write a 1,000-word story on the perfect first date. Now that's something you've never done before. Haley McKenzie trashed her hotel room? She screamed, what? Hold on, I need to write this down. Fume, just a second my pencil broke. It's time to do your job, Rufus. <laughs> no! No! Let go! Bad, Rufus, bad! Ugh. Room swirly, white lights beckoning, light flashing before my eyes. Uh, I swear if I live, I'll be a better person. Uh, uh. Thank you! You saved my life! No, I saved your tie, and that might have been a mistake. That mistake changed my life. Thank you for holding. You have photos of Haley throwing her phone at the concierge? Not interested. The new Happy to be Alive Michael Davies is out of the gossip game. Forever! <laughs> Hello? I just made a life altering decision here. Slow, dramatic applause would be appreciated. <laughs> what is the best way to ask somebody out on a date? I prefer the old school method. Go and ask that girl if she likes me. Go away, Noah. I'm writing questions about first dates for a survey. You're doing a survey? Yes. <laughs> what? My name's Rebecca Harper, and I'm too scared to go on a real date, so I'll make up some dumb survey instead. OK, A, that sounded nothing like me. B, I'm not too scared to go on a date. And C, my dad won't let me go on a date. When will he let you? When I'm 40. <laughs> but only if I keep my grades up. I got an idea. This is going to sound weird, but what if you tell them you're going on a homework date? Is that your incredibly awkward way of asking me out on a date? It's one of them, but don't get ahead of yourself. <laughs> Here's the plan. You and I will go out on a date, but as friends, and only so you can get your story. Don't you think it would be kind of weird, you and me, on a date? My name's Rebecca Harper, and I didn't hear the part about it being a homework date. Okay, ha-ha. Or maybe it's going to be weird because I'm secretly in love with Noah Jackson. That's it. Your history. Your history? Man, even your threats are nerdy. Look, it's your dad, and he heard that you're dating. Where? Psych. <laughs> DJ, can I talk to you for a second? May I talk to you for a second? Sure, but could you wait until I'm finished talking first? Of course. What's up? It's my mom's birthday soon, and I need some cash to buy her something nice. Oh, OK. Um, well, how much money do you need? Put your money away, DJ. I just want to let you know I'm being paid to be a human billboard. A human billboard? Don't worry. It's just for a day. Then I'll have enough money for my mom. I'm sorry, Wilder, but you might want to buy your mom a card instead. Team Buzz would never allow you to rent yourself out for ad space. Really? Because they just bought prime ad space between my chest and belly button.
Did you see what Mr. McDean was wearing this morning? I don't know if they were shorts that were too long or pants that were too short. Either way, I never want to see his calves again. Shh. You have now entered a negativity-free zone. What in the world are you miming about? Something I learned from this little unknown gem, Smaller House, The Secret Guide to Happiness. I'm reading the chapter on how to find your inner fun. This unknown gem has been on the bestseller list for 42 weeks. The author's been on every talk show and the movie's coming out next week. Wow. The old me would be upset about being so out of touch. The new me could care less. I swear, Amanda, I'm never saying a bad thing about anyone again. I bet you don't make it two seconds. Well, that's longer than your skirt's gonna be in style. That was at least three seconds, right? Give it up, Mikey. You are so not a smile or else kind of guy. Hey, I'm still a work in progress. Now, what one thing should a journalist always do before he or she starts writing an article? An exclusive spa weekend? That's your answer for everything, including how did General Bra prepare for the War of 1812? Never underestimate the importance of an Egyptian red clay facial. He won, didn't he? Actually, he died in the third battle. Well, he looked great the first two. <laughs> that Woody Exchange was brought to you by the deodorant B.O.B. Gone. It'll send a stench to the bench. Yeah, the answer I was looking for is prepare. A journalist can never be too prepared. What if a certain article is beyond preparation? Then the journalist should just wing it. Right, Mr. Shepard? Well, there's really no exception for good research, but if the person thinks they can handle it, then, yeah, winging it could work. It's like they say in Smile or Else. Ready, set, go! Mr. Shepard, make Michael stop quoting psychobabble. I could do that, Amanda. Or I could ask you to respect the fact that my classroom is a negativity-free zone. Allergies. I forgive you. I embrace you. I love you. Achoo! Even though you're making it really difficult. You are so not going to believe this. I just got back from a fashion show and I saw Trinity Slay kissing her new boyfriend. Good for Trinity. She deserves love. Problem is, she hasn't broken up with her old boyfriend yet. Amanda. Tsk, tsk, tsk. A rumor only makes three people look bad. The one who said it, the one who spread it, and the one who read it. You may be living by smile or else, but I have a secret for you. DJ still expects you to file an article about a celebrity and not some silly book. <laughs> Rachel McAdams. She's even nicer than you think. You're supposed to be a hard-hitting gossip columnist. I did include the part where she wasn't allowed to wear makeup in the 12th grade. Now, if you don't mind, I'm gonna go up to the roof and watch a sunset. It's actually as beautiful as people are always yapping about. No makeup? That poor, unfortunate girl! Look what I bought with my ad money. A Dracula cape. I thought you were saving to buy your mom a gift. I still am. The marketing firm extended my contract for the week. I'll buy her a gift on Friday. Man, this human billboard thing is amazing. You know, Wilder, when something is too good to be true, it usually is. I didn't say it was actually Dracula. I said it was a Dracula cape. I mean, this marketing thing. The wild man has an ironclad contract. As long as I advertise whatever they want, they have to pay me. Well, what do you have to wear next? A headband for a French clone called Lujure. Ooh la la, c'est bon. Oh. <laughs> Ew. What did I tell you about something being too good to be true? An L doesn't have to stand for loser. It could stand for lame. <laughs> How was that any better, Wilder? Man, I'm such a loser. And you have an ironclad contract to prove it. <laughs> so, uh, here we are. Here we are. <laughs> On a date. Homework date. <laughs> you know, this is no different than when we hang out at the blurb. 
Except for the clean glasses. 